This is Rick Matson from the University of Washington Shoulder and Elbow Service. We're talking about how to do a reverse total shoulder, and these are the final steps of the procedure. After having completed the glenoid side of the arthroplasty, we turn our attention to the humerus. We use this orange juicer kind of reamer shown on your left to shape the uh, humeral metaphysis in the desired cup shape that exactly fits the shape of the prosthesis that we're going to put in it. This prosthesis has some bone ingrowth surface that nicely fits inside this reamed cup and allows for bone to grow into it. We use impaction autografting, again using this uh, trial prosthesis as an impactor. We use autograft from the humeral head when it's available and impact that into the metaphysis and diaphysis until there's a tight fit. The reason impaction autografting is so important is that it prevents the problem of a stress riser at the tip of the prosthesis. You can see that the stress is being borne by this graft that's been placed between the prosthesis and the bone. The bone graft can be seen as this fluffy cloud placed here and below so that the load applied by the glenosphere to the humeral component is nicely transmitted from the humeral component to the bone. The problem with uh, other methods of fixation such as cementing is that there's a stress riser right at the tip of the prosthesis so that any loads applied to the arm, if the patient does a sudden motion or if they fall, uh, it will crack right at the point of the stress riser as shown in this case and in this case. Note that in both of these cases, cement was used to fix the prosthesis all the way down and you can see the results of the stress riser, stress riser producing these transverse fractures. So once the humerus is prepared, we impact the assembled humeral component with its cup uh, and the polyethylene liner into the prepared humerus. Here you can see the sutures that we'll use for repairing the subscapularis. We always prefer to repair the subscapularis because it adds strength and stability to the shoulder. As a final check, we look for unwanted contact between the humeral component and the glenoid bone and between the humeral component and the undersurface of the acromion. We also check for stability, especially with the arm in internal rotation, adduction, and extension. So this is the desired outcome. We can see here that we have the glenosphere with an extended neck pushing the humeral head into a relatively anatomic relationship with the shoulder blade. We can see the large central screw that provides immediate fixation without waiting for bone ingrowth. Here it is down the center of the scapula with the uh, locking screws around the periphery. We can also see the impaction grafted humeral component with bone graft on the, every aspect of this thin stem that avoids the problem of uh, stress shielding. And finally, we can see the relatively anatomic relationship here uh, resulting from the fact that it was not necessary to stabilize the shoulder by pushing it down, but rather we used what we call east-west tensioning. Here's an example of um, a shoulder that had uh, pseudoparalysis after a failed rotator cuff repair. And by that, we mean the patient was unable to raise the arm above the horizontal. In spite of an active, aggressive rehab program, the patient still had pseudoparalysis. And you can see that the humerus had moved up and in. Here is a radiograph taken three years after surgery, again showing a stable glenosphere, stable base plate, stable impaction grafted humeral component. And we note that even though her cortex was very thin, we have 
uh, protection with impaction grafting all along the stem, and here is her active function three years later. Thank you very much.